Hey everyone, just recording this quickly to preface the video. Um, I forgot to say this in the intro. What's going to happen from now on is that the, um, the podcast is going to come out a bit earlier on my website and on Spotify. This is because it's a lot easier for me to put out the audio and the um, like. It's way easier to put out the audio. I can do that like really quickly. But when I release everything at the same time, um, the YouTube videos sometimes take a while to get out and to produce and stuff. So the you know whenever there's problems, it means that I'm not putting out podcasts. I know it's been a while since the last one. So I'm going to be pumping out podcasts um, on my website and on um, Spotify and Apple. YouTube videos will come after, usually probably only like a day after, so it's not a drastic difference. But if you are someone who wants to listen to the pod, then it will be available on Spotify and on my website. If you obviously don't, um, if you're a YouTube listener and you don't have a Spotify account, um, that's perfectly fine. You can, I'm launching a website, well, I've launched a website, which I'm going to introduce in a second. And you can listen to the podcast on my website. And um, it's a lot easier from there. You don't have to make an account or anything. So yeah, um, enjoy the video, enjoy the podcast. This one doesn't have face cam for you YouTube listeners. This one doesn't have face cam. Um, it, it, we we kind of did this podcast last minute, but um, it's still great. Like this is probably one of my favorite podcasts to do. We did like a little segment, and it was really sick. So enjoy the podcast. Hey everyone, it's Levin here. Welcome back to episode six of the Levin Podcast. Or what will be episode six? Um, it's a bit confusing because I'm actually recording this after the Porter podcast, which should be coming next. We were trying to get this out for you. Uh, we're trying to get the Porter podcast out for you before this one. But unfortunately, we ran into some technical difficulties with the file on that one, so we're going to try and get that out soon. Um, of course, I want to say, you know, as always, thank you for all the support you guys have been giving me. I really appreciate it. I am currently done making my website i've launched my website so if you want to check out all my content in one central place you can check out my website i've actually been writing articles recently and i just released my first article um it was about epic's approach to handling um handling organizations and the relationships they have with organizations so if you want to give that a read um i'd really appreciate that also you can access the podcast then all youtube videos i make um i'm actually posting podcasts one day early so if you're really into the podcast you're really eager to listen to more episodes you can always find the episode early on my website um, and that's at 112k.com if you go on my twitter you can uh, see it in my bio 112k.com um, on this episode though we're speaking to speedy gonzalez we, we, we did a segment called over and under um, I kind of explain it in the <coughs> sorry I kind of explain it in um, the segment when we get to it but it's, it's pretty easy to understand um, so I hope you guys really enjoy it it's not something that I've seen done yet so hopefully you guys enjoy it um, and I'll, I'll, I'll see you guys on the next podcast alright man so how are you hey what's up man I'm good I'm doing good um, happy to be here. That's happy to have you, man. Obviously, it's you know short, short, very short time, and because you're you're obviously going to New York tomorrow, basically. Um, yeah, yeah, I'm going to be driving up there from North Carolina, so got like a seven hour stretch of driving. Then I'm sleeping at my duo's house, picking him up, and then another four hours. So it's gonna be a nice little road trip. Yeah, it's nice. I obviously don't drive yet because um, I'm 17. Well, in the UK, to drive, you have to be 17. So I'm, oh, I'm okay. starting to learn, right? But I yeah. literally cannot conceive the idea of driving for seven yeah. hours straight. Like how, like, how does one do that? Yeah, I mean, America's like a driving culture, right? Like, we can drive when we're 15 as long as a adult signs over. Like, yeah, That's I'm going to let my child drive That's at 15. crazy. Yeah. Uh, but like you can't really do anything in America. It's so like it's made for roads, right? Like Europe has trains or whatever. Yeah. Uh, yeah. We don't have that over here. We need to drive. Yeah, because I've had like people from America mm -hmm. come over and they're like, I don't like the UK because I can't drive. Like you guys don't really have roads that we really do in America. Like, yeah. Like you, you, like you guys don't even have like drive-throughs, right? Like that's not a real thing over like, there. It's not. It, obviously, it's a thing that like, we have them, but it's just yeah. not as. It's not as big of the culture as it is in the America, I guess. <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah. but we see we're, we're not here to talk about drive throughs We're here to talk um, <laughs> World Cup, World Cup predictions. So this is obviously I don't know if I'm going to explain in the intro, but if not, it's here now. This is basically over and under. 
So what we're going to do, I have some mock predictions here. Um, I got them from an undisclosed source. Uh, just kind of like a ranking, a prediction that they have of the solo World Cup finals. Um, we're going to go through each person. And we're going to basically say over, under or stay. If it's over, we think that they're going to do better than where the mock draft predict, predict, predicted them. Sorry. If we say stay, we think it's about accurate. If we say under, we think they're probably going to be a bit lower than where they've been predicted. So, let's get right into it. The first person we have here is Tfue. Um, he's predicted as first place. So, this 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 source has Tfue predicted to come first in the Solar World Cup. I'm, you know, I'm, I wouldn't say I'm, say I'm a fan of Tfue. Obviously, I've paid attention to him for quite a while now in the scene. And he's always been quite successful at these kind of events and if like based off of what I'm going to say for a lot of my predictions you'll kind of tell that I value the LAN experience a lot for this event like I'm someone who's been advocating mm -hmm. and saying kind of I think the players who are going to be most successful are the ones with LAN experience and although Tifi obviously has like the most LAN experience out of almost anyone in this whole event I do not believe mm -hmm. he's going to come first. So I'm going to have to go with the under here. What do you think, man? Uh, look, listen, I'm I'm like a 10-month Tifu sub, right? So I love the man. Yeah. But I, I think I'm going to have to agree with you on this one. I'm going to say under because there's a couple of reasons, right? Uh, first off, Tifu didn't play at ESL, so it's hard to see how exactly he'll perform on the international stage yeah. with an international lobby. ESL was the closest thing to World Cup, uh, and he didn't, you know, have the opportunity or he didn't attend, yeah. right? Uh, so we can't really tell how he's going to perform when you have players like Stompy. Uh, I I'm not even sure where Tifu's going to land, right? Like he's yeah, had yeah, yeah. Westworld, he's had Frosty, he's had the block. Uh, but do you have really strong performers contesting those spots? Uh and you have some really, you know, cracked 14-year-olds in this lobby that are going to yeah. out-mechanic, you know, a player like Tifu. So yeah, uh, I, I have yeah. him in my mental top five, but to win it, I have someone else in mind. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. I definitely agree with you there. Like, this, this, this lobby is the most skilled lobby of Fortnite we will ever see. Well, not, I don't know about that, but it's the most skilled mm -hmm. we've ever seen so far. And obviously, Tifu is someone who's been criticized for his mechanical ability when it comes to, you know, the quickness and speed of his building, the methods in which he uses. So it'll be interesting mm -hmm. to see how he does. Like he said, like he is someone who I have in my top 10. But mm -hmm. as to win it, I'm not too sure. Over the next person we have is someone who a lot of people probably have to win the whole thing. Um, this prediction has him at second place, and that is Stompy. Mm -hmm. Um Mm -hmm. Stompy is someone who, as as he's been in EU and I used to like somewhat compete in EU, I've I've seen him around for quite a long time and I recognize him. And mm -hmm. for me, what's always connected with me with Stompy is the fact that Stompy and Stompy and Shinken were not always at the top of EU, right? They were for a long period of time they were quite an average juror to say the least, and they kind of had this this period where they were working a lot smarter than everyone else like there was a problem mm. in EU where kind of everybody was playing a lot but people weren't taking the time out to do VOD reviews really analysing the game and analysing their games to see how they can improve people were just kind of playing customs all day and snipes all day and thinking oh that's mm -hmm. how I'm going to improve and they were a duo um, who did that more than anyone else and obviously mm -hmm. it showed off when they then they went to Katowice a lot of people didn't know much about them going into that event. A lot of the EU players or a lot of the hardcore EU fans obviously did know about them and were kind of written for them. And they and they mm -hmm. showed up. They they performed well for their first LAN events for both of them. And um, mm -hmm. then when you look at the, the World Cup qualifiers, the online events, Stompy and Shinkin, Stompy in particular, the first person to double qualify, he's been so consistent each week. And when it comes to mechanics, he's he's up there with the best. And I genuinely mm -hmm. see him... With this one, I think I'm going to go stay. 
uh, just because it's too hard for me to to say he's going to be the outright winner, but it's too hard for me to to go uh, under really. So why gonna... do you have to go stay? Dude? <laughs> I was going to do the same thing. <laughs> oh, we gotta, yeah, we gotta uh, switch up our answers here. We gotta we have do, different we, opinions. Yeah, but we, no, I was uh, I was one of those. Yeah, I was. Uh, do you mind? Do you mind if I take it over? Sorry. Yeah, no, it's, it's, no, it's good. You yeah. Go. <laughs> uh, no, I have to agree. I mean, I was one of those people that. You know, when I was casting ESL Katowice, uh, I saw these guys win a game or come second, I believe, mm-hmm. right? Their high ground retakes were, you know, flawless. And I was like, who's this stompy and chicken guy? <laughs> and that's my nickname for chicken. <laughs> chicken. Uh, because I'm over here in the NA and I hadn't really kept up with the EU scene that much. And uh, apparently they were like up and comers or like really intelligent players. Yeah. Um, Stompy's been described as the Bizzle of EU. Yeah. And, you know, now that I've, like, kept an eye on him, uh, as you mentioned, like, one of the first people to double qualify, I think his... Because he's... he's uh, He specialized, basically, on uh, Frosty, right? Like, he has the ability to win Frosty, so his off-spawn strategy and, like, his confidence there is really strong. Uh, I think he he's going to make an end game every single time yeah. and he's smart enough to like map manage and make it all the way get placement points almost every single game yeah. so for that reason i definitely think he has what it takes to to you know at least come second yeah uh he's someone mm-hmm. who like uh, it'll be interesting to see how he deals with the kind of pressure because at this point it's it's no secret that everyone has him to be in that kind of top three when you're making predictions, everyone kind of has him around that, that top three. So it'll be interesting to see how he performs. Um, mm-hmm. As for the next person, um, we have Mr. Savage. So Mr. Savage here is predicted to be third place. Um, it's interesting with Savage because once again, he's he's someone who I've obviously seen a lot of as he's in the EU. And like back in the day, he used to be on Public Enemy. And in those times, I used to always... To refer to him as the best solo player in EU, like he was winning every solo competition when we had the mm-hmm. solo showdowns, any kind of solo events we had back then, he was winning. And you know, his kind of dominance has has, has not at, like kind of stopped. He's been one of the best players in the EU and in the world for the past couple of months. Obviously, because of age restriction, he wasn't able to compete at Kavitsa, um, which is unfortunate. So once again, he's someone who we haven't seen him at an international level. He does have a bit of land experience, which people don't know. I've seen a lot of people kind of say he doesn't have land experience, which isn't you know necessarily true. He kind of he's competed at Polaris, which was a smaller land, and he went mm-hmm. to a DreamHack Summer, I think. Mm-hmm. I'm pretty sure he went to DreamHack Summer. So he has a bit of land experience. Of course, this would be his you know first major land, but um, I don't know. I've never I've never known Savage to be someone who kind of folds under pressure. Um, but with that being said, I I'm probably gonna have to take the under here, um, for the sole reason that, like, it, it's not even it's not even to his flaws or fault, but it's just like when you look at the kind of players who are come after him, I think a lot of them have stronger cases for me to kind of put them into that top three. So for mm-hmm. that sole reason, I'm gonna I'm gonna take the under. What do you think? Uh, yeah, I think with a player like Mr. Savage, it's definitely going to come down to the mental game, yeah. right? Can they keep calm under pressure? Uh, I think I've heard some analysis on his gameplay, or I've read some, at least on Reddit, where uh, in his earlier like winter qualifiers or whatever, his his movement was a lot more shaky, I believe. Uh, yeah. And recently, it's become a little bit more smooth, kind of. Yeah, like, so that's some of those fair. jitters... Yeah, some of those jitters have gone away and he's gotten a lot more comfortable and confident in his gameplay. Yeah. Um, he can if he's gonna drop Happy Hamlet, I definitely think he can he can pull that off, right? But I think a lot of people are gonna contest Happy Hamlet. So you know Yeah, that's gonna be interesting. It, it, big question mark there. Can his can his mental fortitude, you know, remain uh on you know on on bound uncontested whatever you want to call it uh but yeah i definitely think i'm gonna have to go with under here because as you said he does have a little bit of land experience but uh everyone's gonna have nerves no matter who you are yeah yeah yeah. 
and how you handle that is gonna really really decide how you perform here i think um i saw i think it was bala who made a tweet about how like depending on how those landings go with savage being one of the players in particular if he's someone who gets happy and and he's able to to control that each game he's going to be a big big player in end game so it'll be interesting to see how his landing goes mm-hmm. i'm not sure in particular who's going to be contesting but regardless like whoever's contesting you know it's going to be a talented player so yeah i mean they have to be they know they're going in having to contest savage right exactly. like you can in solos maybe you can split happy north and south yeah, yeah, yeah. um but if you can test you know it, it can't hold three players and you have to be a really confident player to go up against a heavyweight like Savage. Yeah, definitely. Um, going into the next player, um, coming in fourth, fourth in this ranking, we have Phase Dubs. Um, Phase Dubs has had quite an interesting journey. I think he's someone who started to gain a lot of popularity, a lot of traction, you know, and towards the beginning of the World Cup qualifiers. Obviously, he had the whole cheating scandal, which was a bit of a, it was a weird. It was a weird time. That was around the time when I kind of stopped paying attention to the scene. But I just kind of remember, mm-hmm. you know, a lot of people kind of jumping on him about him cheating. I, and and obviously, it came out that wasn't the case. It wasn't true. Obviously, I don't want to get into that because that doesn't really matter to when talking about how he's going to do in the World Cup. But he's someone who, mechanically, like when people, like I remember when I came back. Um, to the scene and I was trying to figure out who are the people to watch who I need to pay attention to and I asked around people were kind of like you got to watch face dubs like, you got to watch dubs he's mechanically he's one of the best in the game you know like his box fighting ability his his quickness his speed is his confidence is something as well that I've, I've I, I quite like um this one's a harder one for me um I'm not really sure where to go with him. So I, I kind of... I, I want you to kind of get into it and I want to see what you have to yeah. say, really. Yeah, so I have two major talking points that I want to mention about Dubs, right? Yeah. Dubs is a zero-ping player. Yeah. There's a big question mark here about how uh, how zero-ping players are going to perform when everyone's on zero-ping, right? Where you yeah. can't take walls as easily. Yeah. Your timing with the wall takes has to be immaculately perfect in order for you to even have a chance to get a wall. Um, And with Dubs, again, like, no land experience. He's one of the young players coming in here. Yeah. Uh, So, again, like we mentioned with Mr. Savage, the mental fortitude thing or the confidence under pressure thing, when you're on the big stage in front of a stadium, like a sold-out stadium, live audience, like, how are you going to perform and handle that public uh, appearance and that public pressure yeah. uh, and you only have six games to perform right yep. so uh, with dubs I definitely see him making in my head I, I see him performing top 10 yep. yes uh, but uh, and, and, and here, here I will say something to his credit when dubs pulls up to your box more than likely, you have an 80% chance of losing. <laughs> um, I will give him, I will say that to his credit. And if you're scared at World Cup and you're like, I, I don't know, I, I don't know whether this podcast is like cursing or not. No, you're, you're, uh, maybe you're, you can bleep, you can bleep, say, bleep say it out. Want, say what you want, but say like, what you want. there's a hundred players like shitting the bed, right? Like, no yeah, one wants to yeah, die. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, everyone's like trying to just stay alive. It's like stay away from me. Yeah. I'm just trying to make placement points here. If if a player like Dubs rolls up to your box and he's like, "Hey, I'm going to kill you. I'm going to eliminate you. I'm going to get in your box and one pump you," like the fight is kind of skewed from the onset, yeah, right? Definitely. This player doesn't want the fight. Dubs wants to take the fight and definitely. win it. So if you're playing kind of scared, you're already at a disadvantage there. Right? It, it, so so that is something it. Yeah, right, yeah. Continue, that continue. is an a, that is an ace up Dub's sleeve. That's why I think, you know, if Dub's doesn't have good loot or good, you know, items, yeah. 
to take him all the way. You can easily, like in a half-half zone, uh, start looking for a box fight to pick with someone, and more than likely, he will win it. I th- so I think that's that's a very mm-hmm. valid point there. That is, it's like you said, it's the mental game because when mm-hmm. when when you have a, a lobby of so many talented people, it, it like you, you're, each person's talent starts to like eliminate e- each other. So it's kind mm-hmm. of down to what do you have after that, and with someone who's as confident and can be as aggressive as him he could end up you know being incredibly successful but then there's also the other hand where you know he tries it it doesn't work out for him and then he you know kind of decides he needs to change the way he plays and i think that's like that could be a big weakness for some of these younger more inexperienced guys like if they have two games where they play their aggressive style it doesn't work out they're gonna feel inclined to you know play more passive and obviously if that's not a style you've been practicing for the past couple of months, you know, how well do you do that? How well is your timing with certain things? Like, it'll be interesting to see. I think because of this, like, a big question mark with, you know, kind of like the zero ping aspect of it, I'm probably going to take the under. But he is somebody who definitely can prove me wrong. You know what I mean? So. Yeah, I mean, we have him here at number four right here. Yeah. Like I said, I have him in my top ten, but I... Definitely, I think I'm going to go with under here because there's a lot of question marks around this player. Yeah. Um, and, uh, I mean, I like you said, the first two games, if it doesn't work out, it really sets the pace. And it's a snowball effect with, this, with these six games. If you perform badly the first two games, it's really hard to bring it back. Yeah. So and it, it could also work the other way, right? He could get, you know, two really good games and then that sets the pace and he goes on to get you know, top five, top three, maybe even win it. Yeah, 100% mm-hmm. agree. Um, go, going into the next player now, um, this one is one. This one is one I'm excited to talk about. We have Bizzle here in number five. Um, I'm just going to say it. I'm going over straight away. I'm, I'm taking <laughs> the over. <laughs> like, I'm buying all the Bizzle stock. I think most people probably are as well. I think... Mm-hmm. He's the most winningest player. He has so much experience. He's, I, I don't know, man. Whenever I talk about Bizzle, I just get like, like he's, like he was someone that came under a lot of criticism like a couple months ago for like not being as mechanically good. People on at a surface level were looking at him and were like, he's not as good mechanically. But then when you actually watch Bizzle and look at his movements, he's one of the most skilled mechanical players in the game. Like he's just very efficient. With, with his builds rather than you know the the pace that we see with a lot of other players um when it comes to his style of play i think he's he's one of the best at like kind of adapting his style of play and adapting to to how to understand like what to do in certain scenarios like you'd made a tweet earlier today talking about how people need to have a plan for storm surge like cuz that's going to be a big thing like i'm sure a lot of players going into world cup probably didn't even think about that so I hope a lot of those players see your tweet like a lot of people are going to be trying to play passive and it's like you need to have a plan for Storm Surge Bizzle's the kind of guy to 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 see all these different kind of kind of um, possibilities and plan for them best so I, I'm really confident yeah. in his ability to do well uh, what, what about you? Uh, I I Mentally, I have Bizzle as winning the whole thing, so I'm definitely going to go with over uh, for a couple of reasons. Um, I mean, like, with solos, map management is so important. I haven't seen a player map manage to the level that Bizzle really, really does. Like, he, he's so conscious of his mats at all yeah. time, yeah. right? He He doesn't go for the obvious, like, high ground plays, uh, he his goal is get those placement points, get that consistency, do a little mid ground pass into zone, use all your rotations to conserve those mats, uh, avoid any unnecessary fights, go for the easy picks. Uh, but yeah, I mean like Bizzle has a strong track record at LAN. He's you know one of the most consistent players currently in the scene. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I, I just can't. 
Yeah, I he's just so, can't imagine so him efficient. not winning it. Yeah, like yeah, he's he's so it, just everything he does is so efficient. Like watching it's, him is like it's so like it's just it's just beautiful to watch watching him play. Like he's so aware of everything. Like all his resources, or like all his resources, all his ammo, his positioning, the players around him. Like he's he's so aware. And I think yeah, that's he's... that's that's another mental edge. Sorry for cutting you off there, but like that's another mental edge. Like, like being able to, like, stay so calm. Think when thinking about all these different factors, gives him an yeah. Like, I mean, advantage. what do you want to say? I mean, yeah. So, sorry for cutting you. Off. I, I don't know how, the format of this podcast. If like I could just jump in or not. No, it's cool. If just that's jump right. in. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, like you said, I think the word I would use to describe him is very methodical. Yeah. Uh, you know, very purposeful in all his movement. Uh, Bizzle has that land mentality, and he takes it into every single game that he plays, uh, scrims, qualifiers, everything. Like, he is a land player. That's where he thrives. I think it's, it's... I think that's been a big factor in, like, people kind of somewhat underestimating him. Like, people have looked at the World Cup qualifiers, and I think a lot of people have struggled to understand the translation between what the qualifiers were and what this land event will be. The the kind of aggressive style of play that was essential for being successful in the qualifiers isn't necessarily going to translate into the land. And that's where you see players who are more methodical players like, like Abyssal will kind of come in and be more successful, in my opinion. Mm-hmm. Um, going into the next player, though... Um, Benji Fishy, um, someone mm-hmm. who I'm friends with. Benji is what can I say about Benji? Ben, the, like he's just one of the, the the most mechanically able players in the game right now. Um, in World Cup, he was he was the second player I think to to double qualify. Um, I recently had a podcast with him, and we kind of talked about his origins and um, how he's got to the point where he's at now, and. Um, when looking at Benji, it's weird because obviously I want the best. I want the best for him. In my personal predictions, you know, I, I, I have him quite high, probably in the top in my top five. When looking at his potential weaknesses, though, something that we discussed on our podcast is how um, historically he's always been someone who gets quite nervous. Um, so even like back when he first started trialing with Savage, right. Savage had kind of blown up on Twitch at that point, so like him and Savage would be playing on stream, and he knows there's thousands of people kind of watching him, and Savage is kind of judging whether he's good enough to be his duo or not. And he's like, he told me like he was very nervous, like he's sure that he's going to be incredibly nervous over at World Cup. Mm-hmm. How that's going to affect him, not too sure. Um, he obviously is being coached by Destiny Jesus, um, and like one thing I I talked about in a video that I made about that decision was that like Destiny Jesus is someone who was like a powerlifting coach in the past, right? So he's had experience coaching and um trying to and, and giving confidence to other players. So it'll be interesting to see if like Destiny's given Benji advice on kind of staying calm and not letting his nerves affect him. Because some people like nerves aren't automatically a bad thing. You know, everyone's gonna have nerves at this event, but the nerves aren't instantly a bad thing some people translate nerves into into a form of confidence some people translate it into into different ways so it'll be interesting to see how he translates his, his nerves but when it comes to mechanical ability I, I don't doubt him at all I I think he said he's going to land I'm not sure where he's going to land I'm trying to remember I, he's, he's not landing happy obviously because Savage is going there but I'm pretty sure his landing spot seems pretty like legit I think he'll be fine when it comes to landings but it'll be interesting as well to see with all of these players actually it'll be interesting to see where if their landing spot doesn't work the first couple of games because you only have six games do they do players start to switch around and change do they kind of stick with it and take different approaches it'll be interesting to see but um, mm-hmm. I'm probably going to take uh, I think I'm probably going to take the under for this one um it wouldn't. It, it, I'm taking the under, but I don't think it'll be like a significant drop, really. Like if you were to say that, because this is sixth, mm-hmm. right? 
Like I'm taking the under. Yeah. I, I, I still think he'll be somewhere in that top fifteen. I'm um, not sure though about sixth for now though. So um, what, yeah. do, what do you think? Uh, I'm gonna go with over just because I want to see this man buy his mama house. Same, same, <laughs> same. On it, that's, that's what I'm saying. Like me personally, like yeah, like, he's such a dancer guy. Yeah, like, he's. I, I want to see him do well. Yeah. Yeah, so, I, personally, I want to see him succeed and do really well. Um, you said there was like the the mental, you know, nervousness. Nervousness can sometimes be uh, translated as excitement, but it can also manifest itself as physical shaking, right? Yeah. Uh, so if this man is nervous and he's shaking and he's on high sense, you know, he could start missing some shots. Uh... The mental, we mentioned that over and over again, the mental is going to be play a big role here um but i believe these players you know once they get in that chair and they're at that desk everything melts away and the only thing in front of them is the game that's their entire world yeah so maybe it takes maybe they're nervous game one but coming around to game two game three they just start to get into the zone so i i think once benji fishy starts to get into that zone you'll you know nothing to worry about um you obviously just spoke about the kind of aspects of once everyone sits in the chairs and end the game none Mm -hmm. of the external factors matter and for that reason with the the next person we're talking about i'm I'm buying all the stock i'm going over on on mongrel he's he's here at seventh place i'm i'm Mm -hmm. going over i'm buying all the mongrel stock he's someone who when it comes to the mental aspect that we've, we've been talking about, he's someone who, like, in every lobby that he plays in, in everything that he's played in, from being around him, you just know that, like, he genuinely, in his heart, like, and in his mind, believes that he's about to shit on every single player in the lobby. Like, you, like, just, like, even if you just watch his streams, like, you, you can feel it. Like, he, he genuinely believes that he's, like, the best, and that's a nice way to think, you know? Because um, mm-hmm. it's not like he's he's arrogant or dumb about it, like he. But he can just tell he genuinely believes that he he can win this whole thing, and I do think he's a strong candidate to do so. Um, of course, he does have his weaknesses, um, but but so does everyone else here. I, I don't think this is, we don't have a complete player yet in 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 Fortnite. I don't believe so. Mm-hmm. I, I'm I'm gonna take the over here. What, what do you think about Mongrel? Yeah, I mean, look, I'm a I'm a huge fan of Mongrel's Twitter timeline, right? Like, <laughs> this man is content gold. Yeah. Uh, every single time he comes out with a tweet, it's like the funniest thing ever and the most hilarious thing ever. Yeah. Um, but you know, Twitter impressions does not equal winning a LAN tournament. Definitely. Uh, Mongrel, it took him a while to qualify in solos, right? It took him yeah. until week nine yeah. to figure out the format and the playstyle that he wanted to do. Uh, for you know solos i don't even know I, I mean he's been claiming a tilted spot uh is that for duels is that for solos that's i don't know both. That's he, both. He, for both okay yeah. yeah yeah so i i think it really comes down to seeing how that tilted strategy works out for him he's been using that like you said you know that that shit talking to to really claim that spot yeah, and yeah, that's yeah. kind of like that's that's the really interesting strategy, right? Using your Twitter, your 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 clout, let's call it, yeah. to to claim a strat like a landing spot and a spawn spot. It it's an outside the land strategy, similar to how like Tifu used to claim Westworld, and everyone who contested him was like, you know, clout farming yeah, basically. Yeah, yeah. It's a mental mind game, right? Like, yeah, but it's it's it's, so, it's a thing mm-hmm. where like when you when you look at the other side of that though, it could go very wrong for Monga. Like, if you mm-hmm. you obviously I'm sure remember, Nick Max used to be considered the king of tilted, right, or whatever. And then there was the event where Aiden came in, and and, and pretty much just shot on him and kind of took tilted mm-hmm. for his own. And and what if one of these like lesser known players comes in and does that with Mongrel until it like he's kind of tried to claim it, but there will obviously be people contesting him. So it will be interesting to yeah. see what happens. What do you think? Um, you know, Nick Merckx, he's he's got a you know 
you got to put some respect on Nick Merckx, right? He's he's a controller player out there trying to represent controller players. Yep. But you know, we if we're being honest here, he doesn't have the mechanics to back up a tilted strategy. Yeah. Aiden did have the mechanics to to just kind of you know steamroll a player that can't keep up with mechanically. Yeah. Right. And Mongrel does have the mechanics to back up a tilted strategy. Uh, he's got the builds. He's got the aim. You know, he's got the confidence to back it up. Yeah. Uh, so for that reason, I think he he can definitely back up his claim. And anyone thinking that they can contest Mongrel is up for a tough fight. Definitely. Uh, but off like after spawn, going into mid and late game, you know, it's up in the air how he performs. I could, I could also just see a situation where like. It's, it almost seems like he's getting griefed. Obviously, like, if if, if we go back to the kind of Zextra um, Viking thing with the Korean players, who was it? Was it Fax Fox? I can't remember who uh, it was. Yeah, it was... Yeah. It was, I think it was Fax mm-hmm. Fox. But, like, you can end up with a situation like that where you have such talented players that it just becomes like a stalemate and tilted, which in turn overall like looking at the game it will fuck either team that comes out on top you know like that is mm-hmm. a situation I could see happening but like you said once it gets to mid game it's all up in the air um, but but I'm, I'm buying all the Mongrel stock I think he's going to do really well um, going into the next player though we have Clicks. he's here ranked at 8th um, I think Clicks is probably going to be the last person within the top 8 that we talk about but Clicks is another one of those um, zero ping players. Someone who, when I came back to the game, people told me you should watch this guy. And like with him specifically, like I'm like him more so than Dubs. I think I'm kind of like worried about the whole zero ping thing. Um, mm-hmm. I'm interested to see how how he's gonna perform in that environment. If he's gonna be able to box fight as well as he does online. If you know he has his timings right, if he's just gonna even have the same confidence, because because even though these European players are confident people, we see them being confident. They they're not naive, they're not dumb. They know that they've lost their kind of advantage. So it'll be interesting to see how his his game plan, how his strategy changes, if it does at all. Um, so yeah. I think for that reason, I'm probably gonna. I think I'm gonna take the under. Weirdly enough, I was mm-hmm. gonna say I was gonna stay stay, but I think I'm gonna go with the under. What do you think? Uh, I'm probably gonna have to agree on this one. I think, I mean, when you tune into a click stream, you can tell that he's a very confident player. But mm. what happens when that confidence gets taken away? Right? What happens when you go from all right, I can walk up to this guy and take his wall first try, and then you go to all right. I'm probably not going to get this wall. That that's a major blow to your self-esteem and your confidence, right? Like you you're now doubting yourself uh because that player can now hold his wall and maybe you'll get the wall on the fifth try. Yeah. Uh but now you, you know that confidence you once had is gone. The playing field is even. Yeah. Uh you can no longer take that guy's wall. You can no longer easily win a box fight based on ping and taking walls alone. Um I will say though that I, I tweeted this out earlier. It is possible to take walls on land and clicks. It, he got so good at getting his timing right that people were even accusing him of using a Mac. Yeah. So, yeah. So, uh, I, I think if he gets some practice in, he might, you know, might be able to to actually make it so that he can get a wall first try every try because he is one of those players that is so good at getting the timing right. Yeah. Um, but that requires, you know, getting on the land server, getting on the land PC and practicing taking walls against your teammates. If he's able to do that, then his odds definitely do go up. Yeah, but for definitely. right now, without that, I think I'm going to go with under as well. Yeah, definitely. Um, so going into... The players, so those were the players within the top eight, um, within that ranking system. But I, uh, we both kind of looked at the rest of of the rankings, and we kind of 
saw some some interesting positions, some positions that we thought we could discuss, some that we disagreed with, etc. Um, getting into the first one we noticed, we saw Zayt, um, Zayt of NRG, he was ranked here at 11th. What do you think of that? Uh, I, I disagree with that assessment. I mean, I think he can do way better than 11. Um, he's, he's got probably the, I mean, there's a lot of people with a lot of land experience and Zay is one of those people, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, he knows how to play smart. He, he's a very thoughtful player. He's a very confident player. He's one of those players that also shit talks on Twitter around his landing spot. If you ever say if you're ever in his stream and you say hey i'm gonna land on you the mood changes immediately and yeah. he he turns into a bear defending his spot like you're yeah. going to get shit on if you try to even think about contesting me yeah. that is his attitude towards anyone even threatening to contest his spawn but you know people that have tried to contest his spawn you know they he backs it up like tifu and bizla tried landing on him you know just jokingly right uh, just kind of poking fun at him, like, yeah, let's land on Zay right now. And they they got steamrolled. They mm. died. Like, they took, Tifu took like 10 steps and then went down, right? Yeah. Um, he knows how to defend his spawn. And that spawn is really strong. That'll give him the loot to go to endgame, the mats to go to endgame, the rotation to get to, you know, center zone, second circle. Like, by all means, he. He's got the strategy to go, you know, top ten, top five, every time, and he knows how to contest high ground. Yeah, which is very, very strong, very strong quality that not a lot of players in this lobby have really mastered. I think um, it's very interesting when you look at his kind of track ref- record at the events. He obviously, him and and Saf won um, that uh, Kavita event. And, like, he kind of alluded to how when it comes to, like, nerves, a lot of that... Obviously, you know, you say that to kind of show yourself off and make yourself look big. And, Mm -hmm. obviously, he said how, like, they don't really get nerves anymore. Which, to an... Like, obviously, you know, he might... You can call his bluff there. But to an extent, I do believe him. Like, I think... I think at this point, he's... When, like, if you were kind of, like, ranking you know, who's going to be most nervous at World Cup versus who's not going to, like, who's going to be not as nervous. I think he'd probably be, like, at the bottom of that ranking. Like, I think he's probably going to be the least nervous person going into this lobby, especially because I think he's gone under a lot of people's radars when it comes to predictions. So, and that can, can that can work as a chip on his shoulder, you know. He can be like, you know, I have something to prove. I have, you know, I, I, I'm one of the best players and people need to respect me as that, which I think the majority of people do, but... You know, obviously, when you look at rankings like this, like yeah, it, it shows how he is someone who's has potential to slip under the radar. I guess. Um, yeah, I feel like people would disagree with me here, but like, like I can draw a comparison to Zay and like Michael Jordan, right? The levels of confidence, borderline cockiness, yeah, is is like it's it's almost parallel. Um, where you know Jordan will will you know do like an incredible play or do like his little, like his Air Jordan move, basically stick his tongue out and like just basically rub it in his, the other team's face or whatever. At ESL Katowice, this man was taking the L on the entire lobby. Like, like, you know, he's got the confidence. Nervousness isn't a word I would use to describe Zay for sure. 100%, 100% agree. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, Zay is someone who I, I'm gonna I'm gonna definitely be taking the over on that eleventh place. I see him being within the top seven at least. I think I think he can end up in the top seven at least, if not even win the whole thing. Um, the next person though on this that I saw I saw Solary Keenstar um, at fourteenth. Um, I saw this one and. Obviously, I've had more time to think about it. I, I saw this one, had more time to think about it. At first, I was thinking, I think I might take the over here. But at the same time, I think I might just stay. Um, Keenstone's been in the scene for a long time. He's been able to compete at this top tier, this top level, 
for so long. Like, like he's been successful in every kind of era of Fortnite we've had. Like, the, within there's been different meta changes, different seasons where different players were were on top, but he stayed so consistent throughout all of that. Um, but I think I'm just going to go with this day. He has the experience. He has lots of land experience um, from French lands. The international lands, what, I'm not sure how many of the international lands he's been to, but I think he was at one of the skirmishes. Um, I'm not sure whether four skirmish or summer skirmish. I think it was at one of them. I should probably get that up. But he's someone who I think he's going to be another person where he'll probably have less nerves like is it like he's probably confident in himself because he he's performed at a high level for so much longer than a lot of the players he's competing against so i think he's going to be someone with a lot of confidence going in and therefore you know with the mental game he has experience in end game um he knows what he's doing he kind of has like the what what bizzle has with like the for the, the i can't even say the flipping word um he's very methodical is what I'm trying to say, and therefore I think I think he'll he'll be successful if he can get to and get. I'm not sure where he's landing, um, but uh, when it comes to that, it's a question mark for me because I'm not too sure. But if if he can get to end game, I can see him being consistent and and very successful. What, what, what do you think about King stuff? Uh, I mean, I anyone who attended ESO Katowice, I feel like they have an edge on the competition and Kinstar was one of those people. He was at Katowice. He was uh, performing very well at Kato. And, yeah. you know, he probably left that experience with a lot of notes on how to improve at the next international land tournament. So, you know, he's definitely going to have an edge in this lobby. So I'm going to go with and over here yeah. just for that fact um he's got a strong work ethic uh he's got strong mechanics he's yeah. got strong land experience i i see no reason for him to perform well here at world cup all right um another player who i think kind of has i don't think we need to talk about him as much just because he kind of basically has all of the aspects that keenstar has and that is sky sky here is ranked at 16th um I'm going to take the over for Skype though, just because... I'm going to take the over, but I will I will say here now that he's kind of like a hit or miss. He's somewhere where I think if the first couple of games don't go too well for him, then I don't see him like being able to bounce back there. Like, there's some players who, even though it's six games, there's some players who I think they could probably have two bad games to begin and bounce back and still finish quite strongly. Like, Zayt would be one of those mm. players for me where I feel like even if he had a rough start, he'd still be able to bounce back and, and get into it. But Sky is someone where I feel like if he doesn't have that good start, it won't necessarily translate mm -hmm. through. Um, I don't know if yeah. you want to input. Yeah. Uh, I'm ashamed to admit this, but, you know, since I'm in NA, sometimes some of these EU players go under my radar. Uh, I haven't been had the opportunity to really review Sky. So uh, another person that I haven't had an opportunity to really review is Dementos. Yeah. But I know you probably have some opinions on Dementos as well. Yeah. Um, nothing too, too, too in-depth with Dementos. But what I, I will say is that in these rankings, he's ranked about 60th, right? Now, obviously, I'm not too sure how he did in the, in the qualifiers. I know he, there was only one week where he was in that top eight. But... When looking at land experience for EU players, because a lot of the NA players in general just have more land experience than EU players, just because of the way the early kind of skirmishes were were, were handled. But Dementos is somewhere where I'm pretty sure he's been to every single major land. He he was one of the only EU players to kind of be at those early um, skirmish lands. I think he was at Kavitsa as well. Yeah, he was at Kavitsa. Um, Dement Dement Dementos is someone who he has all the land experience so that's not a question mark for me and he's someone who I think if he if he's in a position where he can be successful and get to end game it kind of it is that thing of you know chip on my shoulder I, I don't see him necessarily being consistently well I'm not saying he's going to be you know top 20 or top 15 but I saw him at 6th and I thought that was quite unfair I could see him having a game where he just pops off and that kind of boosts him higher up into the standings 
Um, but obviously, yeah, like uh, he he's, he he yeah. he has a tendency to be quite aggressive as a player. Um, that mm-hmm. is something that can work maybe against him. It can work for him. Um, but yeah, once again, it's all it's all give or take. A lot a lot of our a lot of our rankings and predictions will probably be wrong. Like if you just look at the nature of Fortnite events in the past look at how people predicted other events a lot of it was wrong a lot of these players in the lower rankings a lot of these lower tier players that we don't necessarily know a lot about one of them is bound to pop off you know like a f- not even one of them a few of them are bound to pop off and displace some of these more established players that we know you know so. yeah i mean i would love to see an underdog story as well that that'd be amazing if like one of these like lower rated or underrated players actually you know, hype the crowd up and the crowd goes wild, like yeah. becomes a fan favorite, sets them up to to grow a stream like after World Cup, that'd be yeah. absolutely amazing. And that's the opportunity that they, they have in front of them here. Definitely. Uh, yeah. I think it's a thing where as well, like we've seen it happen at other events where certain players build storylines for themselves during the event and gain popularity from that. Like I remember... Um, Remember Morgasi, how he was like, mm-hmm. like he was, he went into the event every, he won a game and he was like shouting out FaZe and stuff. Obviously, they didn't <laughs> end up on FaZe, but like he was shouting out FaZe, like he was making a name for himself. And then it gave him kind of notability. Like when you saw him in game, in the next games, you were like, oh, there he is. You know, what's he doing? Like people, people are going to build up storylines for themselves. Um, this is obviously something I've spoken about with Bala as well. Like with, because solos, you have a hundred individual players. There's so many different storylines. I feel bad for the people who are, for Epic, running it, like, paying attention and kind of picking out certain storylines is going to be so hard because there will be mm-hmm. players who simply just get lost in, in the whole event when it comes to just how much they are shown and their storyline. But it will be interesting to see how things go. I hope I hope some of these unders prove me wrong. Um, but but we'll just have to see how things go. Do you have, do you have any mm-hmm. final remarks, really? Yeah, I mean, I just agree with you. There's definitely some storylines to keep an eye on. Uh, players such as, for example, Jarkos, a Polish player. Yeah. Uh, at ESL Katowice, he won the Polish edition. Yeah. Uh, that gave him the opportunity to compete at the international edition. Nick Merckx wasn't playing solo, so he gave his spot up to the winner of the Polish edition. That was Jarkos. Yeah. Jarkos performed really strong in a very static lobby. Uh, he was able to actually take high ground a couple times uh, and get really strong placement points. Yeah. And then, you know, he qualified week five. Uh, so, you know, his story continues and uh, he's a really strong solo player, really aggressive solo player. Yeah. So I, that's someone I'm definitely going to keep an eye on. But like you said, you know, I think, I think it's hard to make predictions with solos because when I was reviewing ESL, Kato solos. Uh, I saw a different person on high ground every single game, yeah. but I saw the same people on mid ground pathing almost every single game. And it's gonna come down to those people that are in mid ground being consistent with their placements that we'll see. You know, take the top ten positions. Yeah, like there's a few players when even looking at this list, there's so many players who have the potential to just perform way better. Like looking here, I'm seeing. I'm seeing Kluja, I'm seeing uh, Low Boom, Psalm, I'm seeing uh, just a lot of players who vivid aspects. Oh my god, aspect is something she have spoken about probably. Yeah, aspect is so down low here. But like, there's just so many mm-hmm. players, crew, a lot of EU players will know crew. Like, he's someone who can easily perform well. The X2 Twins, like, we've only spoken really about EU and NA players, but we have to remember those other regions can come in. And and mm-hmm. and potentially shake things up. So, yeah, I would love to see like South America come in and win a game. That would be yeah, strong yeah. showing. Um, but I think like the question on everyone's mind is how will these other regions perform? Uh, I mean, like we had some OCE boys, some Australia boys come in and perform really strong at trios right yeah. here in NA. Uh, so. You know, you you saw that they could compete here in NA against NA lobbies and World Cup qualifiers were in the same lobbies because they were all here in, in New York doing boot camps and doing the weekend tourney. Yeah. Uh, so the some of the OC boys, 
you know, definitely made a strong impression. Um, but I would love to see, you know, there's a couple of South America players coming up. I would love to see them perform well as well. Definitely. Um, it's, it's been, it's been, this, this was fun to do. This, this podcast was so like impromptu as well. Like, do we kind of <laughs> just, like, do we, we kind yeah. of did this at like, last minute, but, um, well, tell, tell us about what you have planned for after World Cup content wise, man. Uh, well, lately, I, I don't know, man, I, I'm for, for my own personal channel and content, I'm thinking of doing a series like Professor Speedy or Coach Speedy, mm -hmm. uh, where I just buy a morning cup of coffee and I sit down and I do like, like a lesson plan, right? I, I, I think that's a really sustainable model for me to go forward, like pick a topic and then, you know, do almost like a like a lecture yeah. because I love doing educational content that yeah, that helps yeah. out the community as well. Yeah. yeah. Um, in terms of announcements, I'm really excited to network here at world cup and hopefully after world cup, I'll, I'll have a couple of exciting things to announce. <laughs> hopefully yeah. that's a plan. Go there and network, <laughs> uh, mm -hmm. you know, make use of the opportunity. There's going to be a lot of big people there, a lot of people to talk to and to network with. So, um, Thank you for joining me, man. Enjoy your drive. Stay safe. Um, it'll, hopefully, we yeah. can see some like cool moments with you there in the background and stuff. Um, well, it's nice talking to you, man. See you. Thank you. Thank you for yeah. for joining me. Yeah, I appreciate the opportunity to come on the cast. It was a ton of fun, man. Definitely enjoyed it. Thank you, bro.